This is Jennifer Dassinger with A Plus College Ready, and today we'll be going over Unit 4 Nomenclature, Writing and Naming Ionic Compounds. So a chemical formula is a type of formula, relative number of atoms of each element in this compound. These formulas can either be molecular or ionic. So today we'll focus on ionic compounds. And ionic compounds are lattice network of positive and negative ions held together by a mutual attraction between ions. And these ions form a formula unit. They form a simplest ratio of the compounds of metals, which are made of cations, which are positive, and nonmetals, who are composed of negative ions, that are anions. For example, when you see a block of salt with the millions of ions, you're going to see the formula unit of just sodium chloride. Binary ionic compounds are composed of monatomic ions, which have charges of cations and anions to become neutral in charge overall to make the compound. For example, potassium is a group one cation and oxygen is from group 16, which has a negative two oxidation state. It will require a ratio of two potassium atoms to every one oxygen atom to make the formula unit of potassium two oxide, or AKA common name, potassium oxide. Now, nomenclature is a fancy way of saying the naming of compounds. As you recall, the reason why we make compounds is due to the electron configuration so that elements can combine with other elements to achieve a noble gas configuration state. Positive ions are named by their normal element name, and those are commonly found on periodic table in groups 1, 2, 13, and metals in 14, in column 14. Negative ions, anions, drop the normal ending of their last name and the suffix of IDE is replaced. Look for these elements on the periodic table in groups 14 through 17. So for example, chlorine becomes chloride and oxygen becomes oxide. Roman numerals, aka stock naming system, is mainly used for D block elements. However, can be used for other compound names of the monatomic ions from families of metals from families 1, 2, 13, and 14 as well. However, usually we refer to stock naming when we look at our transition metals. These have more than one oxidation state. For example, we have iron 2, aka ferrous. We have iron 3, aka ferric. And then we have lead 2 and lead 4. When combining our cations and anions, the cations are written first and the anions are written second. There are two ways to achieve this to make a compound. You can use the mathematical way of looking at the oxidation states of the cation and anion and mathematically calculating those to equal to zero. Or for a mathematically less inclined people, I like to call it the drop and swap, which is technically called the crossover method when you Google search it. The drop and swap is you drop the charges of the ions, the cation and the anion, and then you crisscross or swap those amounts to the opposite element, as you see in the diagram depicted underneath step five. Therefore, this creates a formula with the correct mole ratios of the atoms in its compound. There's where you see aluminum oxide. So naming these, as we just saw, all you do is you name the cation first, unless it is a transition metal, then you would include a Roman numeral name, and then the anion second with its appropriate suffix of IDE. So we just saw aluminum oxide and sodium chloride. The next kind of polyatomic ion in Roman numeral four of our notes is using these substances 
that are covalently bonded but have an overall charge. However, the only way you can use these is unfortunately, you have to be proficient in using them in terms of memorizing them. That's the dirty secret. You have to memorize these in order to use them. So for example, if you look at letter E, we have the, suff the um, cation, which is aluminum. It has a positive oxidation state of three. And then of course we have our polyatomic ion of sulfate, SO4, then its oxidation state is negative two. Remember, there is one sulfur already bonded to four oxygens. So the four oxygens cannot be taken off of the sulfur. It is already covalently bonded. The overall charge is negative two. So whether you're using the mathematical way or the quote drop and swap, you need to keep an account that the oxidation state is the only thing that you use to calculate or drop and swap. And these are called oxyanions, which we'll look at later, particularly when naming acids. So notice they have their own name. Sulfate is SO4 negative two. Now you see other forms of anions, of oxyanions, and you see nitrate, in BI, and then you see BII of nitrite. Notice they have the same oxidation state of negative one overall. However, a nitrate will have more oxygens bonded than a nitrite. Now, the final oxy anions that we look at are the ones that have multiples, particularly your halide ions of chlorine, bromine, and iodine. The example that I've given to you in the notes is if you have one oxygen attached to a chlorine, you use the prefix of hypo. Remember, hypo, hippo, low. It has the least amount of oxygen, so it's hypo. The suffix for the chlorine is going to be it, the lesser number of oxygens. Then when you have two oxygens, notice the oxidation state does not change. It is negative one for all versus, and you will have ClO2, so now it's just chlorite, you drop the hypo. Then we go to three oxygens, which is more oxygen. Now we are to the eight, so now we have a basic chlor eight, ClO3, negative. And last but not least, we have the most amount of oxygens bonded to our chlorine, which is going to have a prefix of per, and of course our suffix on the chlorine of eight. This can also be done with bromine and iodine. So practice those on your own. Last, we see that there is the name that is associated with the first element and there's no hydrogen present. So these are kind of like some oddballs, if you will. We have cyanide, which is CN, negative one, and acetate. Now acetate, we call it a CHU, CH3COO negative, or it can be written as C2H3O2. And last but not least, if a hydrogen is present, the name of the hydrogen and then the next element. So hydrogen carbonate is HCO3, which usually you'll see it bonded to sodium, and that's where we get sodium hydrogen carbonate, or sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And then if you notice, hydroxide. Hydroxide is usually the one that most students miss because they want to put the H first. But hydroxide is O, right? It's OH, negative. Hope this screencast was informative and have a great day. Keep on naming.